Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rakha Kudash. Double honors to the elders and the apostles with great millstone, and peace and blessings to the elect. All right, this is um, pretty much going to be uh, like a little add on. All right, I was watching the elder apostle Tahar's video. All right, called uh, that every one of you do show the same diligence. Okay, and um, you know, throughout, you know, at a certain part in the video, I don't remember the exact time mark. All right, but he, he you know, the, the um, uh, he mentioned how, you know, you have certain individuals, you know, that are out there, you know, and, and uh, you know, they may say, well, oh, well, I'm, I'm doing the work, you know, I'm out here, I'm, you know, I'm out here, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm laboring, you know, but then he mentioned, he said, well, what spirit are you doing it in? All right, and that's you know really where uh, the focus of this lesson is going to be on is um, doing the work is one thing, but what spirit are you doing the work in? Okay, and that that ultimately plays a factor. See, Yahweh Shai, all right, our Lord and Savior said, all right, um, this was a statement that he made. All right, Matthew 10 and 22, he said here, And ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake, but he that endureth unto the end shall be saved. So if you're going to endure unto the end, then the attitude or the, the spirit that you do this work in, that you labor in, matters. All right, because if you're if you're uh, 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 doing the work of the Lord by just going through the motions, you're not going to be able to endure unto the end. Because let's look up this word endure. Alright. Uh, who, who, who Paul met? Uh, met no. Alright, let's see that. Strong's G, 5278. Hupamano. Hupamano. Alright, Hupamano. And it says here, to remain, to tarry behind, to persevere under misfortunes and trials. To hold fast to one's faith in Hamashiach, to endure, bear bravely and calmly ill treatments. See, so to endure unto the end means to persevere under misfortunes and trials. Now, if you're not doing the work of the Lord with passion, but you're just going through the motions, then what happens when something comes to intervene with you going through the motions? You know? Since all you're doing is going through the motions and on the outward, it may look as though you're doing the work, but inwardly, it doesn't have any drive behind it. It's dead. It's like a car being in neutral going downhill. Yeah, the car is moving, but it's in neutral. So what happens when the downhill ends and now you got to go uphill? What's going to happen to the car? It's going to go what? In reverse. It's not going to be able to go up the hill because it's not in drive. All right, there's no spirit behind it. There's no acceleration. It's just going with the flow, going through the motions. You can't be like that when, you, when you're when doing the work of the Lord. All right, because as the elder mentioned, anything less than being on fire, anything less than your best is not acceptable to Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai because the Lord knows what your best is. All right, as a matter of fact, let's go to that. Okay, the Lord knows what your best is. Um, I know it's in the second Ezra. There we go. 16. All right. Second Ezra chapter 16, uh, verse 54. Behold, the Lord knoweth all the works of men, their imaginations, their thoughts, and their hearts. All right. So the Lord knows, uh, each, he, he, he gave all of us a measure of faith, a measure of the spirit and a drive. And he knows, all right, all of us and what level we are putting in to this work. See, so when you when you do the work of the Lord, if you're not doing it passionately, you're not doing it willingly, you're doing it out of fear of being getting a video done on you or being cursed out or being kicked out. All right. Then then. So just because of that, you go through the motions. Guess what? Eventually, like I said, 
it's it's yeah, it's easy to go through the motions when the car is in neutral going downhill. But when the Lord throws an uphill, you know, uh, 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 in your way, you're not going to be able to go anywhere. You're not going to be able to go up the hill. And eventually the Lord is going to weed you out. You need to be passionate. That's how you endure unto the end. That's how you persevere through affliction. Okay? Because your your hope, your passion, all right, your desire, your fervency, your fire to do the work of the Lord will, 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 will not stop burning. It will make sure that nothing gets in the way of you and that salvation. All right? And that's a very important mindset to carry. Okay, the importance of this truth. Yeah, we do it. Uh, uh, we're constantly talking about it, you know, and, and doing things that pertain, pertain to this truth. All right, so it may feel almost like second nature, but you can't let that put you in a complacent mindset. That's why it's important to study. That's why it's important to learn new things, to read constantly the scriptures and to constantly meditate. You know, the scriptures mention about uh, um, uh, meditate continually uh, hopefully I can find it there we go there whoo ooh, ooh, ooh. uh man you know what I'm just keep it here and read a bit of this so this is the book of Ecclesiasticus chapter 6 verse 37 let thy mind be upon the ordinances of the Lord all right now let's look up the word ordinance Okay, ordinance definition. It says an authoritative decree or direction, order. All right, on that, uh, on that day, the king signed three ordinances. It says a law set forth by a governmental authority. Okay, so an authoritative decree or direction. And what 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 are the ordinances or the decrees that were set by the Most High? All right, it's to do the work. He commissioned us to do the work. So your mind has to constantly be on this truth. It says of the Lord and meditate continually because that's how you gain more understanding. And that's how you look. The more and more you read, the more and more you're going to keep your mind fresh and the more topics you're going to get. You know, the more you study, the deeper you get into the scriptures, the more you want to bring it out. So the more excited you are to do a video or to go out to camp and teach. But if you're being stagnant, you're in neutral, all right, you're not reading, you're not studying, you're not growing, okay, then you're saying the same thing and you get tired of it, you know, uh, just going to go out there and do the same thing, do the same thing. But you got you to gotta continuously be growing. You have to be active. How, how, how are living waters going to flow out of your belly, all right, if, if, if uh, uh, you know what I'm saying, you're, you're, you're not taking in living waters, you know, you're not keeping those waters alive, okay, and it's becoming stagnant, then it's not going, whatever flows out your belly, it ain't going to be living waters, all right, uh, I'm going to jump down, this is a book of Ecclesiasticus 14 and 20, blessed is the man that doth meditate good things uh, in wisdom, all right, and the reasoneth of holy things by his understanding, okay, um, all right, so now let's go back. So this is a book of first Peter chapter five, verse one. It says the elders, which are among you, I exhort who am also an elder. All right. Cause Peter was, he's the head of the church, right? So it says, um, and a witness of the sufferings of Hamashiach and also a partaker of the glory that shall be revealed. Feed the flock of the Most High, which is among you. And feeding the flock of the Lord is doing the work. Okay? Because that's what he told, that's what the Lord told Peter three times. All right? Lovest thou me more than these? Okay? Feed my sheep. So, it says, um, taking the oversight thereof. Now, let's look up the word oversight. Okay? It says, uh, Episcopal. Let's hear that. Strong's G, 1983, Episcopal. Episcopal. Episcopal, which says, 
to look upon, inspect, oversee, look after, care for, of the care of the church which rested upon the elders, to look carefully, beware. Okay? And and so a part of doing the work, all right, when you rebuke, exhort with all long suffering, is a form of looking over the flock. You know? So if some wayward uh, doctrine comes out, you you bring out the truth and you you know you you direct the flock, hey, stay away from that, you know? And whatever the topic is, you bring out the truth on it, okay? So that they don't they don't uh, uh, end up you know getting caught up in that snare. But you gotta you know what I'm saying it's all a part of doing the work of the Lord, man. But as it says here, not by constraint, but willingly. Don't don't do the work as if you're being forced to do it, you know, as if you don't want to be here. But if you try to leave, somebody's going you know what I'm saying like you, you like you bound. Like you're in prison, and your only option is to do this. All right. If you don't want to do it, you don't have to do it. You're gonna pay the consequences. All right. But if you don't want to do something, you're not gonna do it with your heart. You're not gonna put your heart into it. And if you don't put your heart into it, it's not gonna be excellent. And if it's not gonna be excellent, then the Lord doesn't want it, and you're wasting your time. Okay. Because you're gonna you can spend years going through the motions. Guess what? It's not going to be a pleasant sacrifice to the Lord because he's going to look at it with disgust and say, this isn't what I want. So it doesn't matter how long you spent doing it. I don't want it. Oh, Lord. Ah, Lord God, why? Well, it is what it is. So as it says, not by constraint, but willingly. Because remember, we are we are an altar, you know, making your body a living sacrifice. So when you go out there, all right, that's an altar. All right, and the works the works we do that's where we make our bodies a living sacrifice unto the Lord so if you're if you're out there teaching but you're not doing it willingly then you're not going to be a, a, an, an appropriate sacrifice unto the Lord but when you're doing it passionately you you're going into this you're going into that you're breaking it down you you could tell that you you want to do it you could tell that you're happy to be doing the work you could tell that you know this is this is you know what I'm saying this is where it is it's contagious. Even if you don't want to talk, the spirit will jump on you and you'll say something. Because you just can't help it. It's your nature. It's where you thrive. Guess what? That sacrifice is going to come up to the Lord. And he's going to He's gonna smell that, that desire, that passion, that zeal, that fervency. Okay? And he's going to be joyous. And he's going to say, yo, keep increasing that man. You know? Keep 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 building up that individual. Put Give them, give, you know what I'm saying? Make sure they're good. Because I, I like this. I like this sacrifice. I like this drive i like this energy that they come with you know to see somebody going that hard for you for your work hell yeah you know keep them going push them push them okay but if you out here you feel like hey, somebody dragging you here Lord gonna look at you like what's this problem you know see you gotta remember the lord he's not charging you for you know the air you breathe you know you have food to eat all right, you have you have a roof over your head. For the most part, brothers are able-bodied. You know, you can speak. You know, and the Lord has a hedge over us that protects us from the majority of the things of this world. Okay? So if he, you know what I mean, he's doing all that for you, keeping you out of harm's way, all right, things that you may not even know, and he requires you to do this work for him, and it's like trying to gain employee benefits, but you're not really doing the work of an employee. What's going to happen to you? You're going to be fired. But what happens to that employee that's, that comes, they're eager to learn, when they're taught, when they're corrected, they, they go ahead and they, they do better. They're going to keep going up the ranks. They're going to keep going promotion after promotion after promotion because whatever position they're put at in that job, they excel at it. You know why? Because even if they don't have any natural talent for the job, their desire to learn and grow and to do better, all right, will raise them up. You know, it'll push them to accomplish the task that they've been set to accomplish diligently as well. And then the the, the higher ups are gonna see it, and they're gonna keep promoting this individual till this individual gets up there. Okay, because they they're willingly they willingly want to do the job. Okay, you don't have to you don't gotta force them. You tell them once, you don't gotta come back and and see if they're doing it because. You told them they want to do it themselves. I don't got to come back and keep checking on you because you're going to check on yourself because you want to do it. You know? 
if you see somebody that's hungry as hell and you bring them food, you think you're going to need to come back every two minutes, yo, you make, make sure you eat. You got to you gotta get some food in your stomach. No. They want to eat. They're willing to eat. So they're going to do it. What You don't have to tell them to do it. They're going to do it. All right? But somebody that's not that hungry, they're sick or whatnot, you got to keep coming back. No, no, no. You got you to gotta, you try to force the spoon, you know, the train, all of that, you know? And it's burdensome. So you'd be all right, whatever, I'll take the food away. So going back to the precept, 1 Peter 5 and 2, feed the flock of the Most High which is among you, taking the oversight thereof, not by constraint, but willingly, not for filthy lucre, okay, but of a ready mind. Let's see what that means, a ready mind, you know. Willing with a larcity. Let's look that word up. All right, that energy. A larcity. Look at that. Brisk and cheerful readiness, eagerness, willingly, enthusiasm. All right. That's that's what it means to have a ready mind, to be to be to be constantly ready to do the work. You know, that, that enthusiasm when you when you and hey, now we all have our days. You know, sometimes you may just be feeling, you know, slow. But if you if you are sincere about this word, all it takes is one or two, three precepts to come out. And guess what? Whatever you are feeling, whatever had you down, whatever slowness you felt, once you start getting into it and the spirit jumps on you, you your fire is going to ignite. You know? And you're going you're gonna to go right into it. You know? It got it got to it gotta be like that, man. You... You know, getting into the scriptures has to be like pouring gasoline on, on, a, on a small fire, you know, and then the second you pour, boom, you know, just like, you know, just in, inflames that, that small fire. That's what the scriptures got to be like, you know, but you got to have that fire burning in your spirit ready. Okay. It says, neither as being lords over the most high's heritage, but being in samples to the flock. Okay. And when the chief shepherd shall appear, ye shall receive a crown of glory that fadeth not away. So, if you want that crown, you gotta you gotta do the work willingly. That's how you're gonna give all diligence, all right, uh, to make your calling and election sure. If you give all diligence, you gotta be doing it willingly, because if you're not doing it willingly, you're not giving all diligence. Okay, a diligent mind doesn't is not being dragged. All right, a diligent mind is ready. An eager, a ready mind, a, 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 a larcity, okay, energetic. All right, now moving on. This is uh, the book of Philippians 1 and 15. It says, some in, I'm going to just hit this verse. Some indeed preach Hamashiach, even of envy and strife, and some also of goodwill. Now, you think if you preach in the Lord of envy and strife, that he's going to come and give you a good reward? No, you got to preach the, the word of the Lord of a goodwill. And that's why the Lord said there's going to be some people who, when he comes, they're going to say, Lord, Lord, let's get it. Um, I'll open a new tab for it. All right, they're going to say, Lord, 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 Lord. Oh, Lord, that's a lot. Um, have we not prophesied? There we go. Matthew 7 and 22. Uh, 21, actually. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. All right. Now, what this means is that it, th this doesn't mean that, you know, if if you're not, if you um, are not of the elect, OK, that you're not going to be in the kingdom. Everybody's going to be in the kingdom. But there's a certain level. OK, there's a there's a there's a uh, there's going to be a different uh, uh, rank, authority, okay, as well as uh, you're going to have, when you go into Revelation, the 20th chapter, it expounds on that, all right, those that are going to go into the kingdom the first go around, all right, to, to build the kingdom, you know, be there to witness the kingdom being built up and so on and so forth, and those that are going to be born into the kingdom, all right, it says, but he that doeth the will of my father, which is in heaven, so those, those that enter the kingdom 
meaning are going to be those that are going to be the first, the first uh, uh, ones into the kingdom. All right, the first ones. All right, from uh, that transition. Okay, which is going to be the the elect of the nation of Israel. Okay, it says, um, verse twenty two. Many will say will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? Right? Remember, they preach Yahweh Shai for strife. It says, and, thy, and in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name have done many wonderful works. Then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye workers of iniquity. So why are certain people who have prophesied in the name of the Lord, right, who have cast out devils in the name of the Lord, have done wonderful works in the name of the Lord, why would the Lord reject reject certain people like that? Because going back to Philippians one and fifteen, there's some who do preach Yahweh Shai, but they do it of envy and strife. Okay, so if you're if you're not teaching the word of the Lord willingly, but you're doing it of envy and strife, you're doing it for filthy lucre's sake, you're doing it, uh, you know, lukewarmly, you're doing it you by going through the motions. You're going to be rewarded by the spirit that you're doing it in. Okay? That's the main point. You're going, the Lord said he's coming back and his reward is with him to give every man according as his work shall be. And he's not going to judge your work just based on what your work was, but what spirit were you in when you did those works? Because guess what? If you're in a, a willing spirit, if you're on fire, you're going to do more works than somebody that's not on fire. Because how do you tell when somebody is in a... When somebody is, is on fire, by their works, you know, by by their, their zeal, their, their passion, their desire. Now, though we've all been given a different measure, guess what? If you, the Lord knows what measure he gave you. So he can tell if you've been uh, hitting your quota or not. Based on if you've been on fire, if you've been fervent, or if you've been just going through the motions. All right. And the, mo the most high... Bahashem Yahweh Shai, do not expect anything less than your best. All right, because they're not—they're not your friend. They're not your boss. They're not school. They're not your job. They—they they are the 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 most powerful creation beings. I shouldn't say creations beings. All right, in existence, because the Most High, you know, what I'm saying, ain't nobody created the Most High. All right. But the the most powerful entities in existence, and they require us to do a, a certain job. You're not gonna get away with doing less than what they require. Hell no. You know, and and it's so bad that if you do less than they require, they're not just gonna let you get away. You gonna get judged for that. All right. How's that for the fear of the Lord? We're dealing with a power that was referred to as Allah Allah Shad. All right, a demon. Terrible, violent, scary power. Okay? Also known as Allah Shadia Almighty. Okay? So, that's the power we're dealing with, man. Now, you know, when the Lord shows favor to you, that's one side. But as, as the scriptures actually say, uh, is it uh, Sirach 16? Okay? The Lord, the Lord has mercy, all right? But so are his judgments. Uh, let's see. There we go. There we go. Uh, ver uh, Ecclesiastic is 16 and 12. As his mercy is great, so is his correction. Also, he judgeth a man according to his works. Okay. So, yeah, the Lord showed the Lord shows one side, which is you know his mercy. You know, and right now he's being long suffering. So people, people don't really see the mind of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh at the moment. You know, if you're spiritual, you can see it to an extent, but we haven't really seen the full mind of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai because he's being long suffering right now. If you're doing good, you keep doing good. If you're doing bad, well, just because the Lord hasn't sent swift judgment yet, don't think that he doesn't see and he's not upset. No. The Lord is very upset, you know, but people don't see the mind of Yahweh Bashem Yahushai on the earth just yet. But when those judgments go out, you'll know exactly where the Lord is standing. You'll know exactly what he thinks about you.
and how he feels about you and what you've been doing. So it's only a matter of time, man. It's only a matter of time. You know? It's only a matter of time. And, and you know, when, when you know, elders and brothers do videos, if you feel a type of way about that, you know, you, you feel like, yeah, yeah, this, that, and you're always saying the same thing. Guess what? The Most High, he's not going to speak. He's just going to bring the judgment. Because there's a reason we're speaking. But when the Most High uh, answers, it's not going to be with words. All right? So lastly, this is the book of 2 Timothy, chapter 2, verse 24. It says, And the servant of the Lord must not strive, but be gentle unto all men, apt to teach, patient. Okay? The main point here is being apt to teach. And when you look up the word apt, all right, it says here, appropriate or suitable in the circumstances, having the tendency to do something. Okay? So... Uh, uh, you have to be fitting. You have to be suitable. All right. You have to be. You have to be be fitting. Okay. You know. You got to be perfect. You got to be ideal. You got to be made for. You got to be tailor made to teach. You got to be tailor made for the job. That's why the scriptures say the spirits of the prophets are subject to the prophets. You got to be ready, inclined, capable. If you're inclined to do something, all right. It says here, leaning or turning away, uh, no, no, not that, um, free willing or favorably disposed toward, and did the scriptures not say do the work willingly, First Peter 5, okay, not by constraint, but willingly, so you got to be inclined, apt to teach, okay, feel favorably disposed towards someone or something, having a tendency to do something. All right, you're prone to it. Okay? So you got to be apt to teach. You know, you got to be you got to be as as Paul said, all right, not slothful in business. All right, uh Romans 12 and 11. Okay, it says here, not slothful in business, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. So when the Lord said, when the scriptures say they that worship the Lord must worship him in spirit and in truth, you know, because the most high seeketh such to worship him. So in spirit and in truth, meaning you, what kind of spirit? In a fervent, all right, in a fervent spirit with sincerity of heart. Because if you're not, that's not, if that's not how you're doing the work of the Lord, it doesn't matter what level of works you do for the Lord. If your heart's not in it, the most high is going, you know what I'm saying? He's going to do something to you because if your heart's not in it, you won't be able to reach a certain level. You'll, you'll be capped off at a certain area. You won't grow. All right? You'll be stagnant because your heart is not in it. All right? If you're dealing with a chick and you're not really feeling her, guess what? You, your, relation, your relationship ain't going to go nowhere. You're going to end up breaking up. Okay? You, but if you if it's vice versa, you're feeling the chick, you, you, you just might marry her. You know? So you, you, you see how on one hand, based on... Your your drive, you know your feeling, you your 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 relationship either progresses, or it ends. So when you're dealing with this truth, it's the same way. Your your relationship, your level, your you know your your spirit, wherever it's going to be, is either going to progress, it's going to grow, or it's going to end. And that's that. Okay. You know, so as the title says, that every one of you do show the same diligence. Okay, but it matters what spirit you're doing it in. So with that, I hope you were edified. In closing, I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rechah Kodash. Until next time, Shalom.